This Ridley O sponsored by Keenvention Yard Info. It's a keen convention, you'll have to go. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for Monday, July 15th. Ten year old cystic fibrosis patient Sarah Mornigan captured the nation's attention when federal bureaucrats imposed a de facto death sentence on her by refusing to modify the rules governing organ transplants. But the welcome decision in this case does not change the need to end government control of organ donations and repeal the federal ban on compensating organ donors. Supporters of the current system claim that organ donation is too important to be left to the marketplace. But this is nonsensical. If we trust the market to deliver food, shelter, and other necessities, why should we not trust it to deliver health care, including organs? It is also the law argued that it's uncompassionate or immoral to allow patients or insurance companies to provide compensation to donors. But one of the reasons the waiting list for transplants is so long with many Americans dying before receiving a transplant is because of a shortage of organs. If organ donors or their heirs were compensated for donating, more people would have an incentive to become organ donors. Those who oppose allowing patients to purchase organs should ask themselves, how compassionate is it to allow those people to die on the transplant waiting table who might otherwise have lived if they were able to obtain organs through private contracts? Some are concerned that if organ donations were supplied via the market instead of through the government regulations, those with lower incomes would be effectively denied access to donated organs. This ignores our current two-tier system for allocating organs. But our objective remains constant. As the wealthy can travel overseas for transplants if they cannot receive a transplant in America, allowing the free market to alleviate the shortage of organs and reduce the cost of medical procedures like transplants would benefit the middle class and the poor, not the wealthy. The cost of obtaining organs would likely be covered by most health insurance plans, thus reducing the cost directly borne by individual patients. Furthermore, if current federal laws distorting the health care market are repealed, procedures such as transplants would be much more affordable. Expanded access to health savings accounts and flexible saving accounts combined with generous individual tax deductions and credits would also make it easier for people to afford health care procedures such as transplants. There is also some hypocrisy in the argument against allowing market forces in organ transplants. Everyone else involved in organ transplantation procedures, including doctors, nurses, and even the hospital janitor, receives compensation. Not even the most extreme proponent of government-provided health care advocates forcing medical professionals to provide care without compensation. Hospitals and other private institutions provide compensation for blood and plasma donations, and men and women are compensated for donation to fertility clinics, so why not allow compensation for organ donations? Sarah Mornigan's case shows the fallacy in thinking that a free market system in organ donation is less moral or less effective than a government-controlled system. It is only the bureaucrats who put adherence to arbitrary rules ahead of the life of a 10-year-old child. It is time, Congress, to wake up and to show that the markets work better in all aspects of health care, including organ donations, just as they work better in providing all other goods and services. This Ridley O sponsored by Keenvention Yard Info. It's a keen convention, you'll have to go. Only 50 bucks held near the peak of leaf peeping season in a place that's fascinating even without its natural beauty. The purpose is to focus discussion on New Hampshire freedom activism. November 1st through the 3rd. Keenvention Yard Info. It's a keen convention, you'll have to go.